Imagine one day being able to breathe on Mars as you would on Earth. This is the concept of terraforming, transforming a hostile environment into a livable one. Terraforming is like an epic science experiment where we play the role of cosmic gardeners, tending to entire planets instead of mere patches of Earth. We take barren, inhospitable worlds and make them suitable for human life. How, you ask? Well, one way is by seeding planets with bacteria, tiny microorganisms like cyanobacteria, which have the incredible ability to produce oxygen. Yes, the very stuff we breathe. Another approach is by pumping greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Once we solve this issue, we then have to increase the planet's temperature as Mars is incredibly cold. These gases trap heat, raising the planet's temperature to a level where liquid water can exist. It's like creating a planetary-sized greenhouse, really. In our quest for survival and exploration, Mars stands out as a potential candidate for this transformation. Among the many celestial bodies in space, Mars presents the most potential for terraforming. Now why Mars? What makes this barren and seemingly inhospitable planet our best shot at creating a second Earth? Well, it's not as alien as you might think. Mars shares some striking similarities with our home planet. A Martian day, or Sol, is only slightly longer than an Earth day, lasting 24 hours and 39 minutes. Its axial tilt is also comparable to Earth's, meaning Mars experiences a cycle of seasons, just like we do here on Earth. These familiar rhythms could make the transition to life on Mars more manageable for future colonists. Mars also boasts potential water reserves, a crucial ingredient for life as we know it. Recent discoveries suggest that Mars was once a wet world with vast oceans that may have been conducive to life. Today that water exists primarily as ice but with the right technology, it could be harnessed and transformed into a life-sustaining resource. The planet's thin atmosphere, while currently a challenge, could be an asset in the terraforming process. The thin Martian air, composed mostly of carbon dioxide, provides a starting point for the creation of a thicker, warmer atmosphere. By introducing greenhouse gases, we could trap heat, gradually raising the planet's temperature and creating conditions more favorable to human life. However, terraforming Mars won't be a walk in the park. Mars is a cold world, with temperatures dipping down to a bone-chilling negative 80 degrees Celsius in the winter. Its lack of a global magnetic field leaves the surface exposed to harmful solar radiation, a significant hurdle to overcome. Yet, despite these challenges, the dream of terraforming Mars is not beyond the realm of possibility. It's a monumental task, one that requires ingenuity, perseverance, and a touch of that old human spirit of exploration. Scientists and researchers are already exploring potential solutions, each more innovative than the last. Although it is an incredible task to undertake, scientists believe that with the right approach, we could turn Mars into Earth, though this process would be thousands of years to complete. This red planet, a distant speck in our night sky, could one day be a world where humans live, work, and thrive. The journey to that future starts with understanding Mars as it is today and envisioning what it could become. Transforming Mars into a livable environment is no small feat, it requires a multi-pronged approach. This method mirrors the natural greenhouse effect that occurs on our own planet, Earth. Next, the introduction of life forms becomes essential. A popular method includes seeding Mars with bacteria and other organisms such as cyanobacteria. These microscopic life forms are capable of photosynthesis, the process where light energy from the sun is converted into chemical energy, producing oxygen as a byproduct. Over time, these organisms could potentially create an oxygen-rich atmosphere, a critical component for supporting human life. But where would these organisms get the water needed for photosynthesis, you might ask? That's where the next step comes in. Importing water and other essential elements to Mars is a crucial part of the terraforming process. One proposal is to use comets. By steering comets towards Mars, we could deliver substantial amounts of water and other vital elements to the planet. It's important to remember that these steps aren't sequential. They would likely need to occur simultaneously over a long period of time. The process of terraforming Mars would be a slow one, taking centuries or even millennia. But with each step, we'd be progressively turning the red planet into a second blue planet. In summary, the process of terraforming Mars involves increasing the planet's temperature, introducing life to create an oxygen-rich atmosphere, and importing water and other essential elements. Each step in this process brings us closer to a Mars that could support human life. The idea of transforming Mars might feel like science fiction, 
but it is a future scientists are actively striving for. The prospect of terraforming Mars isn't just a pipe dream, it's a goal that could be within our reach in the not-so-distant future. The timeline for such a transformation is, understandably, a long one. We're talking about centuries of committed global effort, but the potential benefits are immense. We could have a second home, a place to ensure the survival of our species should anything happen to Earth. It could open up vast new opportunities for exploration, discovery and potentially even new forms of life. But it's not all smooth sailing. There are significant challenges and risks involved. The technology required to transform an entire planet is currently beyond our reach. We would need to develop new tools, new methods and new ways of thinking about our place in the universe. It's a monumental task, one that will require international cooperation, substantial investment, and a shared vision for the future of humanity. And then there are the ethical questions. Do we have the right to transform another planet? What about potential life forms that may already exist there? These are questions we must grapple with as we move forward. There are also moral considerations. If we have the ability to transform a planet, should we not first focus on fixing the problems we've created on our own? It's a complex issue, one that touches on the very nature of who we are as a species and our responsibility to the universe we inhabit. There's no doubt that the future of terraforming is exciting. It's a frontier that promises new discoveries, new challenges and potentially a new home. But it's also a future that demands careful consideration, ethical reflection, and a deep respect for the unknown. As we stand at the brink of this exciting frontier we must ask ourselves, are we ready to become a multi-planet species?